Basics with Babish and my website, basicswithbabish.com, are brought to you by Squarespace. Head there now to check out all of the recipes from the show, kitchen equipment lists, and more. Get 10% off your first Squarespace order with offer code BABISH. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. All right, so to kick off this dips episode, let's make something that's maybe not really a dip, more of a cheese bowl, pimento cheese to be precise. Into the bowl of a food processor goes four ounces of cream cheese, eight ounces of sharp yellow cheddar, the titular ingredient, a four ounce jar of diced pimento peppers, a little dash of what's the shire sauce, and a little dash of hot sauce, that's it. Real pimento cheese would often call for an additional quarter cup of mayo, but we want something a little firmer for our cheese ball, so we are processing, scraping down the sides until we have a nice smooth cheese product. Product. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, the caviar of the South. I don't know why they call it that, but they do. So we're going to wrap this in plastic wrap and use this opportunity to shape it into a sphere. This is, after all, a cheese ball. I'm going to place it into a bowl to help it maintain its shape while it chills out in the fridge for at least one hour, during which time we're going to chop up some bacon. I'm only doing four slices here. I would do about twice as much if I was you. One hour later, when we are pulling our firmed up ball out of the fridge and rolling in the bacon bits. Try to make sure that every viable square inch of real estate is covered, but you can leave the bottom bare if you didn't chop up enough bacon, like I did. Then we're going to optionally garnish this with some finely chopped chives. Not that this bad boy needs much of a garnish. I'd eat this entire thing with a spoon if it were socially acceptable, but we're going to surround it with little toasts or the cracker of your choice. And there you have it, an absolutely impossible to screw up surefire hit. Now let's say you find yourself with a four pound block of sharp cheddar cheese. What do you do with it? Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do with about half of it. We're going to chop it up into about half inch cubes and use it to make some beer cheese dip, which tastes about amazing as it sounds. Now we could go through all the fuss of making a roux, but a nice shortcut is to use cornstarch, about one tablespoon's worth that we're going to sprinkle over the cheese and toss to coat. Much easier than making a roux, if you ask me. And then it's off to the stovetop, where we are bringing one Mexican beer to the boil in a serving appropriate cast iron pan, and then slowly in batches introducing the cheese to the party, whisking constantly and making sure that everybody is melting evenly. At first it's going to look like a watery, beery mess but as you add more and more cheese, I'd say in four batches, maybe add some freshly chopped red pepper, a generous pinch of kosher salt, and a healthy shake of cayenne, you will find that you've made an opulent beer cheese dip without equal. Then of course, throwing it under the broiler for a few minutes just makes it pretty. But we've still got time to add some flavor and color, so I'm going to top this with some chopped onion and sliced jalapenos. And there you have it, nothing short of a nuclear-powered party starter. But what if we want to get back to the fundamentals of cheese, that is, queso fundido, which literally translates to melted cheese, which likewise is as awesome as it sounds. It's also maybe the easiest thing in the world because I'm just going to shred together eight ounces each of Monterey Jack and our giant block of sharp cheddar from earlier and place them in a broiler safe serving dish. And then it's ready to serve. I'm thinking we forgot one step though. It's, uh, it's something. Um, uh, we, we, have to, we have to melt the cheese. Into a 425 degree Fahrenheit oven it goes for maybe like 12 minutes until this happens. It becomes bubbly, brown, and melted. From here you could top it with all kinds of things. Cilantro, chopped onion, chorizo, or you could just dig in like the monster you know you are. Just make sure to serve immediately because you only have about 15 minutes until this becomes queso not so fun dito. Sorry. But now it's time to move on to the daddy of all dips. Spinach and artichoke dip. Into a large bowl goes eight ounces of softened cream cheese, eight ounces of shredded low moisture mozzarella, two ounces of shredded romano, and two ounces of parmesan. Then it's over to the stovetop to warm up our vegetables. We're going to preheat our nonstick pan with about a tablespoon of olive oil before adding some frozen spinach. This has a lot of moisture in it that we don't want ending up in our dip, so we're going to cook all that out about four to five minutes over medium heat before grating in three cloves of garlic and adding our artichoke hearts. I'm using jarred ones. You can use canned ones. It's fine. We're just going to cook those together for another one to two minutes until everybody's really gotten to know each other. And then we're going to add this mixture to our utopia of cheese. I like to do this while it's still hot so everybody gets all melty before it even goes in the oven. We are, of course, going to season with kosher salt and freshly ground pepper, mixing until thoroughly combined and then placing into our oven-safe serving vessel. Lastly, topping with a generous grating of Parmesan cheese before placing into a 375-degree oven for about 20-25 minutes until browned and bubbly. Place on a heat-proof surface with some toasts or crackers and serve. I know you guys were probably expecting something with bechamel and artisanal hand creamed cream cheese, but I've tried like a million spinach and artichoke dip recipes, and this one is by far my favorite. You can jazz or fancy it up in any way you like, but appropriately with the name of this show, sometimes it's best to get back to basics. See you guys this time next week for the live stream cook-along. 
And last but not least, this episode and many others have been sponsored by Squarespace because they've been an amazing partner in both bringing this show and my websites to life. They've got a really intuitive, easy to use platform that made it super easy for someone like me who's never done web design, ever. They have templates, they do domains, they have really good customer service. It's basically a one-stop shop for building a really slick website. If you want to try it for yourself, you can start your free trial today at squarespace.com and enter in offer code BABISH to get 10% off your first purchase. 